Hello, this is Hilary Weller. This video gives a brief introduction to the idea of TVD, or Total Variation Diminishing Schemes. Well, I'm going to start by showing you some animations of the lax wendroff advection scheme and the Warming and Beam advection scheme. We're advecting a top hat profile to the right using current number of 0.2 and 100 grid points. So you can see that the lax wendroff solution is smooth ahead of the discontinuity with oscillations behind it, whereas warming and beam is the other way around. There are oscillations ahead of the discontinuity and it's smooth behind the discontinuity. Um, so remember Godinoff's theorem. Linear numerical schemes for solving PDEs have the property of not generating new extrema, i.e. monotone schemes, can be at most first order accurate. Um, these lax wendroff and warming and beam are both second order schemes. Um, so we want a monotone scheme and we want second order, so it's got to be nonlinear. Uh, warming, yeah, warming and beam is second order accurate. So what we need to do is combine lax wendroff and warming and beam based on local gradients. So if the gradient is telling us that we are ahead of the discontinuity here, we want to use lax wendroff and if we're behind the discontinuity here, this is where warming and beam was smooth. Um, so making the scheme based, the choice of scheme is based on the gradient of phi, the scheme is now nonlinear. Um, we're going to define a quantity called total variation which measures the oscillations produced by an advection scheme. Um, so to total variation is the sum over all the grid points multiplied by the magnitude of the difference in phi at adjacent grid points. We're going to see why this is the right thing to be measuring in order to look at oscillations uh, produced by an advection scheme. So pause, have a go at calculating the total variation for these functions. Pause the video to do this um, and see which ones have got different total variation. So here are the numbers, 8, 8, 12, 8, 12, and 6. So, for example, um, looking at the difference between these two, they've both got the same bounds, but this one, it, ha it's, it hasn't generated new extrema, but it's generated new local extrema, new oscillations here, and so the total variation has increased from 8 to 12. Um, so a total variation diminishing scheme, if you started off with a profile like this, you wouldn't get a profile like that because that's um, uh, that the total variation is increasing between here and here. But you might get something that goes from that to that because the total variation is the same between those. You wouldn't get something that generates that because it, as well as being unbounded, it's generated new um, local extrema. So total variation diminishing schemes diminish the, the total variation. This one's got smaller total variation, so a TVD scheme might produce something like this. So, question to think about. Why is total variation used to measure the generation of spurious oscillations rather than measuring boundedness? And of course the answer is because spurious oscillations can be generated that are within the bounds of the original function. For example, this one. So a total variation diminishing scheme must have a total variation at time level n plus 1 less than or equal to the total variation at time level n. First order upwind is the only linear TVD schemes. Other TVD schemes are nonlinear. So we'll start off with the linear advection equation discretized in um, flux form. So we've got rate of change of phi with time is equal to rate of minus u times the rate of difference in phi over a grid box divided by delta x. Um, and to, for a TVD scheme, we're going to calculate each phi j plus a half as a weighted average of a high order flux phi h and a low order flux phi l. So we've got phi j plus a half. And this psi here is the blending function. It's how we do the weighting. Psi j plus a half times the high order flux plus 1 minus psi j plus a half times the low order flux. So this psi is called the limiter function. We want to use as much of the high order flux as possible without introducing oscillations. So the limiter function psi 
should be close to 1, where the solu solution is smooth, so we get the high order flux, and it uh, should be, and then sec we get second order accuracy, and psi should be close to 0, where the solution is changing rapidly, so that we use the low order upwind flux. And the scheme is now nonlinear since psi depends on phi. Um, so what should these high order fluxes and low order fluxes be? We can use lax wendroff phi 8 for the high order flux and we can use for first order upwind as the low order flux. What should the limiter function psi be? Um, in order to define the limiter function psi, we're going to define um, R, which is the ratio of the upwind gradient to the local gradient of, of phi. So we've got here the upwind gradient and the local gradient. This is for velocity u greater than zero. Um, and as an exercise, we're going to consider the warming and beam scheme, which has got phi j plus a half equal to this. And if I'm going to express this as a a weighted sum of a high order flux and a low order flux, I would like you to find what um, the limiter function psi should be. So phi h, the high order flux, um, so assuming that phi h, the high order flux, lacks Wendroff, and we're going to get um, warming and beam out in the end, and phi l is backwards in space, so phi l is phi j. So then what does psi j plus a half be? And I want to know this what psi j plus a half will be as a function of r at j plus a half. So a hint on how to do this. Equate the two forms of phi j plus a half. So you've got the form with psi in it and you've got the warming and beam form. And then equate coefficients of either um, current number to the power 0 or current number to the power 1. Then the answer you should get is that psi j plus a half um, is is actually equal to R for warming and beam. Um, the solutions, the solution for that is um, on the lecture version of the notes. So now um, the Sweeby diagram, in which helps us to define TVD schemes. The Sweeby diagram shows the limited function psi as a function of R, which is the the R is the ratio of local to upwind gradients. Um, and the Sweeby diagram is used to find limiter functions psi that give TVD affection schemes. So to define um, to find a TVD scheme, start off by drawing lines of psi for lax wendroff and for warming and beam. So we're assuming that lax wendroff is the high order flux. So if we've got lax wendroff we are going to have um, psi equals 1. And we found in the uh, previous slide that for warming a beam, psi is equal to half. So these lines, um, well, you can have a, you have a go at drawing those lines, and I'll show you them when, I've, when we've gone through the derivation. Um, so now, next thing to do is shade the region outside the two lines. And then the unshaded region shows you where you've got a convex, convex combination of lax Wendroff and warming and beam. So if psi takes a value in between lax Wendroff and warming and beam, as in the unshaded region, then the scheme will be second order accurate because lax Wendroff and warming and beam are both second order accurate. So next, draw the lines for psi equals 2 and psi equals 2r. That'll be up, up like that. And um, Sweeby in 19, 1984, the Siam Journal, showed that if if psi is less than two and less than two r, then the scheme is TVD. So shade the regions where psi is greater than two and greater than two r. Um, so here are the lines for lax Wendroff and warming and beam. I've shaded the region outside the convex combination. There are these TVD limits. 2 and 2r. Two I've shaded the region above them. What's left, the unshaded region, if psi is inside this region, then you're going to get a TVD scheme, a second order TVD scheme. Um, 
so there are a lot there are many limiter functions there are many functions that give a value of psi in this range uh, for example there's the van leer limiter um, but there is you can find many others as an exercise you could sketch the um, the van leer limiter on the Sweeby diagram um, for example there's a wikipedia page which gives an example of many um, TVD schemes, the limiter functions for many TVD schemes and you could um, code some of these up, uh, test them out, see how they behave. <laughs>